Test one, two, three. Test one, two. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. This is a live emergency briefing as we have a confirmed tornado here in the Florida Panhandle that has impacted the Tallahassee radar site. You can see that the Tallahassee radar site right now is not operational. I just saw a latest update that the radar actually has power, uh, but doesn't seem to have any damage. Uh, but that tornado was very close. Reports of damage around Tallahassee Airport. Uh, vehicles blown off the road. I am using Valdosta radar imagery right here. Uh, this is scanning a little bit higher up into the storm, but you can certainly see its structure here. A little bit of a hook echo as well. And these tornadoes during this system uh, have looked similar for all, uh, really th from the 25th all the way through present. Uh, you get a little bit of this convection that develops out on the RFD gust front that surges out a little bit out from that hook echo. The tornadoes back here, uh, they become long-lived mesocyclones that drill through, uh, become pretty damaging tornadoes. The storm motions have largely been due west to east, two of this setup as it sheared off and lifted up toward the Great Lakes. Uh, that has led to a pretty stout elevated mix layer. These due west to east storm motions, which are definitely conducive for that tornado threat. Right now, that tornado is just to the south of Lloyd, Florida. And again, this is a confirmed tornado, very dangerous situation here. This is scanning higher up in the storm, so you're looking at the mesocyclone a little bit higher above the ground. But it does give you an idea of where that tornado is heading. Looks like Cody, Florida. You want to be in your safe place. Uh, Wakissa, south of Lloyd. Uh, this is where that tornado is located, but it is making a beeline toward Cody, Florida. It's already caused a bunch of damage out here. Uh, near the Tallahassee Airport, including the National Weather Service office. Uh, rumor has it that uh, uh, reports that that tornado were very close to the radar site and the National Weather Service, uh, impacting the uh, airport out here in Tallahassee. And uh, this is a very dangerous situation here uh, in Tallahassee with this uh, confirmed tornado causing big time problems. We're gonna break down the environment as well uh, that this uh, tornado is moving into. There you can see that mesocyclone, long-lived mesocyclone cruising all the way from Tallahassee. It looks like rear flight downdraft may have impacted the actual uh, radar site, uh, but the latest report is that it does have power uh, at the uh, radar site. Tallahassee Airport uh, was definitely impacted. Some vehicles uh, blown off the road out there. And here you can see the evolution of that supercell. Looks like the RFD is trying to propagate a little further out like that. Uh, it's probably maturing, maybe occluding. Uh, but it definitely looks like a very long-lived mesocyclone. You can clearly see forward flank downdraft here downstream uh, from those west-southwesterly winds aloft while we have this deviant storm motion, almost a due east storm motion there. Uh, let's see if we uh, the, the warning statement has any updates. At 1157, that's the last time a confirmed tornado uh, that was located just nine miles east of Florida A&M. Uh, and it's moving east at 55 miles an hour, already damage reported. At Tallahassee Airport there. Looking at uh, Twitter here to see if there are any updates on this dangerous situation. Here you can see the convective line in general stretching from south central Georgia all the way through the Florida Panhandle down to the Florida Big Bend area. Down here near Apalachicola, maybe some water spout uh, threat uh, with that convective line uh, that is approaching the coastline. But this is a da dangerous supercell with that deviant storm motion. I would love to uh, break down... Uh, the wind shear profile. Let me see if I can do that right now. It might, it might be too late, but we might be able to get an image from Tallahassee to show that VAD. Go into autumnsky.us, which is just an incredible site. Ooh. 1634Z was the last photograph. Looks like a zero to one kilometer SRH. 
is about 226 zero to one kilometer helicity. Let me pull this up really quick, show you what that hodograph looks like in real time here. There it is. So there's the uh, hodograph just before that radar was taken out. That's at 1634 Z. That would probably be about 45 minutes ago. The right mover storm motion might even be a little bit further south than that. And look at this big shear vector. A lot of veered uh, flow here in the lowest kilometer, lowest two, three kilometers as well. Uh, the upper level winds downstream almost due west to east, favoring that right mover uh, a little bit uh, south of due east. But this is the shear vector, and that is quite a, a shallow critical angle. But boy, it shows you that any deviant storm motion will really expand that storm relative helicity in the lowest kilometer there. Uh, you can see the, a 40 knot west southwesterly low level jet, so a pretty veered low level jet there. Surface wind south southeasterly, so you even have a little bit of an easterly component with that surface wind. And that's creating a 40 knot shear vector right there as well. So this is an awesome website, autumnsky.us, if you want to check it out. Look at some of these hodograph plots. We can also look at Valdosta. Here's Valdosta. A similar pattern, about a week or one kilometer wind of about 30 knots. So further north, you're probably not going to get that tornado threat like you're going to get down into northern Florida uh, with that more favorable hodograph there. But I suspect that this thing's going to continue for a long time. Let's see if we can find a hodograph downstream a little bit. Jacksonville, maybe. Jacksonville, not as favorable. So really, it's that isolated zone there in northwestern Florida where that hodograph looks quite favorable. Uh, the one kilometer wind is down to 20 knots out there further east in Jacksonville. Let's take a look at the wrap analysis here. Breaking down these environments in real time is always fun. Look at that little southeasterly wind here, right in the vicinity of that. And very isolated area of storm relative helicity, as you can see. Uh, just an isolated area in excess of 200, right in the vicinity of where that supercell is moving. Let's forecast this out with time too. And you can kind of see that little shear max follow that convective line and that supercell all the way across northern Florida, eventually arriving toward northeastern Florida even. You can see that convective line tracking it eastward. This is at 19Z. This is at 21Z. It should be about 4 p.m. Four hours from now. That uh, supercell is probably still going to be going across north central Florida there. And it definitely shows that low-level jet of about 40 knots here out of the west-southwest uh, in the vicinity of that convective line. You really need a deviant motion, an east-southeasterly storm motion to that supercell to realize that um, storm relative velocity in the lowest kilometer in excess of 200. Let's go back to radar again. And again, we are looking at the Valdosta radar site scanning up just a little bit higher up in the storm. We're using this radar site up here, South Central Georgia. The Tallahassee radar site was impacted by this tornadic supercell that continues to move east-southeast. You can see the deviant motion on radar. So that right mover storm motion is pretty accurate, uh, assessing that storm motion and really squeezing out storm relative velocity in the lowest kilometer in excess of 200 there. This storm's gonna continue. Long track storm all the way across North Central Florida. Lake, these areas here, you definitely want to keep an eye on it as well. Live Oak, Lake City. Uh, it's several hours, probably a couple hours still away from your location, but it's moving at 55 miles an hour. Pretty fast moving. Let's see how the mesocyclone has done higher up in this storm. See how it's trending with time. And it does look like this mesocyclone has weakened just a little bit since when it was located over the Tallahassee Airport earlier. This is the long loop. Look at that mesocyclone intensify ramp up on approach to Tallahassee Airport. It looks like it intensifies to just east of the airport. 
Look at that thing on approach to the Tallahassee radar site. Let's see if we can still gain some of the uh, radar loops from the radar site. There you can see just as it went offline, that tornado was impacting the radar site. Looks like a, a big RFD coming in there too. Here you can see a hint at that RFD a little bit there. We don't need that many, don't need 30 frames. I'm on the Radar Omega app showing you this tornado impact on the airport. There you can see the mesocyclone gaining strength on approach and bam, look at that RFD pop right there, just south of Andrew. Right there. You can really see that RFD come in there just to the east of Andrew and force tornado genesis. It was definitely back behind the RFD gust front and forward flank, the notch, a little bit back behind as you'd expect. And then there was that tornado. It actually looks like the tornado may have gone just south of the radar site, maybe even in this area. Right near the airport there, just a little bit south of that radar site. Oh man, look at that. Tornado genesis just to the west of the Tallahassee airport. That happened. Let's see if we can see the debris. You're not going to be able to see how high that debris was lofted in the storm because it was so close to the radar site. Looks like you can see a little bit of a correlation drop, but boy, it's so cool. Right there. But it looks like it touched down just to the east of Andrew. It's kind of hard to see with all the noise that close to the radar site. Oh, look at that thing. Big RFD. See if I can go back a little bit. Stop it. Stop. I'd like to go frame by frame. Look at that RFD. Nice arched RFD there. It's almost like a little bow echo on the really small scale. And then on the north side of that bow echo, you get cyclonic vorticity generation, almost like you would with a bookend vortex as well. You can see that inflow notch just to the east of Andrew. HP supercell as well. And it was on the leading edge of this convection, kind of encouraging a quicker storm motion with the outflow of all this convection loaded up behind it. That uh, encourages a streamlined vorticity intake into this tornado as well. But this was the impact on the Tallahassee radar site. And we do have a new tornado warning expanded east that includes Greenville and Madison areas. And this uh, supercell still has a, the same general structure. It looks like it's cycling, though. Here you can see this RFD gust front. A little bit of a forward flank downdraft right here. You know, we're scanning up just a little bit higher up in the storm. So if it does produce a tornado, it would be in this region, the new one. That would be just to the north of Lamont now. And this thing is moving rapidly off to the east. It seems to be cycling, so it is moving just a little bit quicker. Now that it's cycling, I wouldn't be surprised if another tornado touches down soon. And now it's uh, radar indicated, which means that it definitely is cycling. Still has tornado potential moving east at 40 miles an hour. It does look like it accelerated right when it was near the Tallahassee radar unit as well. Greenville, Madison areas. Watch out, certainly, here in the Florida Panhandle. It's going to be heading north of the Perry area. I've storm chased a lot in this region here of western Florida. Well, there you can see the mesocyclone. It is, it is definitely moving east-southeast. So I'm wondering if this warning is just a little bit too far north. I think the southern part of this tornado warning uh, has a greater likelihood of a tornado. But you're pretty far away from the operational radar site there that's in, in Georgia. So you're scanning up relatively high into this storm. And I have been told that uh, I've seen on Twitter that that radar site here in Tallahassee does have power. 
Uh, the tornado was close. Some vehicles, some damage too around the Tallahassee airport. Looks like I may have lost my live feed. Let me see if I can shut this down and then fire it back up again. Stand by, everybody. Be right back live again as we are tracking this uh, tornado that has impacted the Tallahassee radar site. 